Hello everybody, Tony Franklin here. While I'm known mostly for the fretless bass, there are a couple of tunes from my repertoire that were done on the fretted. One of the most surprising for people to hear is the firm satisfaction guaranteed. You listen to it, it really does not sound like a fretted bass, but it was. And so anyway, we're in the studio, we're recording the track, it was going very, very quickly, one or two takes from most of the songs. It was, it was amazing, the chemistry was very natural and very easy between us so that was cool <laughs> the only bass i had with me was my firm fretless what i call the firm fretless my 77 fender precision bass with the added pickup which is the the twin to this i put one in this bass and one in that bass so i didn't have this bass with me call it naivety call it visionary <laughs> At 22 years old, I didn't consider myself a visionary. I just played the fretless bass, and that's all I took to the rehearsals and to the recording studio. So Jimmy Page turned around to me and said, how would you feel about playing fretted bass on this? Now, I was fairly new to the band. I wasn't going to say to him, no, Jimmy, I really want to play fretless on this. So, of course, I said, yes, yes, I'll do it on the fretted bass. But I don't have one with me. Oh, okay, we'll use this one. And he handed me an Alembic bass. I, I don't know what the history of it was, this particular Alembic bass. I'd never seen or played an Alembic bass before. I knew nothing about them. It had four strings, thankfully. <laughs> and so that was it. I plugged in. So, okay, felt fine. And we played Satisfaction Guaranteed. And that was it. It was done. I've been playing it on the fretless bass in rehearsals up, up until that point. I've been playing it a particular way. And so I basically did everything the same. And it's unusual because I use the thumb. It's a very hypnotic and repetitious bass line, which just works. And I'm surprised a lot of people comment on, on how cool this bass line is. But to me, it's one of the simplest ones from my repertoire. It's the power of a band. When a band is all locked, I mean, the drums are pretty simple. It's a repetitious part. There's like a drone rhythm guitar part that Paul Rogers played. And then there's the leads and everything and vocals. So it just creates this magical mood, this vibe. It's very hypnotic, very swampy. But the bass line is very, very simple. This was it, and this is exactly how I played it. Not like that, it's the wrong note. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually in G, not in E. <laughs> That's it. Name that tune. And that was it for the chorus, the first chorus at least. And then we got those big slide parts, which I doubled on a keyboard doing a string thing. I love that part. It's <laughs> so simple, but then there's <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's it's almost embarrassing how simple it is. But then the chorus again. <laughs> the solo I mean, that is it. And then it does a similar thing on the choruses on the out. This is the about the only place where you can really tell that it's fretted. It's wild and it's fun to retell the story, as you can tell. I have a lot of fun doing this. But the other song, which a lot of people have requested, and I'm not going to say the title. What is it in Harry Potter? He who must not be named. 
the song that must not be named that people ask me about all the time. Why am I not going to mention it? Because it might get. It might. Because the intention behind that song was never what the title is. Never, never. It was the 80s. It was all the spillings and all the spoils that go with rock and roll. You all know what I'm talking about. When the album was released, it had, what is it, the parental warning, the adult advisory, that's right, parental warning, PG-13, 17, whatever it would be. And I'm like, why? It just makes no sense. I suppose it's because of that title. It was never intended that way, and it still, still isn't. It's just about... <laughs> ah, that was a great song, though. And then I actually, for the recording, did switch over to fretless bass for that. Very moody stuff, perfect for the fretless. And then I switched over to the fretted for the solo section and interestingly I did slap technique well, I don't know if you really call this traditional slap technique it's my own thing that worked for the riff I could have done it with the plectrum with the pick but I didn't there's only two instances that I'm aware of Ugh, maybe there's more of me slapping on a record and funnily enough one was with Blue Murder and the other one was with the firm tear down the walls but I slap that on the fretless I guess you call it rock slap <laughs> then back to that section again and it's to the when you break down things at, the, at their essence their core they're pretty simple I guess that's easy for me to say that because once again it's you hear the part by itself and it's like mm, that is pretty simple it's the delivery it's the timing it's the interaction with everybody that creates the magic that's why I don't often like to hear isolated bass tracks you hear incredible bass tracks isolated with James Jameson with Paul McCartney and while they are fantastic to hear that, to hear the tone, to hear all the little subtleties and all that, what you don't get, especially with Jameson, is the way that it was interacting and the syncopation and the groove that is created with the drums and the other instruments. That is the magic of bass. It's being able to create all that movement and pulse and heartbeat while keeping it hypnotic and entrancing. I love bass, as you can probably tell. I've been playing it almost 50 years, which is crazy to me. 
and and yet and this was the first real bass that I had I got this in 1976 and I still adore it I still love it I saw a thing God bless Jeff Beck I saw a, a quote recently about why he still loves Fenders and yeah, the sort of instruments that are smoother and a lot more efficient to play and all that. I said, you have to work on a Fender. You really do. But that's what gives the magic. That's what gives the tone, and that emotion. If it's perfectly set up and easy to play, you often lose. You can move around quickly, but you often lose. For, for my ears and my experience, you lose a lot of that reaching, that intensity, that digging. And that is the stuff that makes it special to me. It's hard to describe this stuff, but uh, I do love the bass and wanted to share those two moments. to the Beethoven school of playing which he would rather have something have the passion and the emotion than the technical proficiency <laughs> and I just demonstrated that <laughs> especially on that last bit you know have the passion have the emotion don't get too stiff and wanting things to be perfect stay fretless even on a friend face, all the best.